Okay. So a big warm welcome to this Sunday evening. You know, I hope you've all had a blessed Sunday. Um, you could be doing anything right now, but you've decided to tune in to this webinar, which I think is going to be really important. Um, there's going to be a lot of nuggets dropped today. So if you are taking notes, well done. If not, I'll give you a moment to just grab a pen and paper um, or to set yourself up on an iPad or something like that. You definitely want to be taking notes. So please do grab a pen and paper or whatever's needed. Make sure that you're taking notes. But again, guys, I just want to give you a nice, warm welcome. Okay. This is a good decision. Okay. We spend so much time, you know, working for other people's dreams, you know, working at our job, our nine to five, exchanging our time for money, but we don't often invest in ourselves. So just by attending this webinar, you know, a huge, huge well done. And how did this all come about? The reason why this um, webinar came about was because right now we're going through a serious momentum like season. But across all three teams, you know, Kingdom Builders, the A team, Team Nikos, there are lots of home meetings being booked. There are lots of private Zoom calls and there are lots of mini events going on. And it's inspiring. I'm seeing people coming out of their shell. It's excellent. But having, having spent some time with some people um, setting up some of these, you know, some of these mini events, it's quite clear that this is a training that's needed because it's not often something that's taught explicitly. You know, I'm fortunate that I'm in a position where I, I can deliver on this. So I'm hoping to give you lots of value today. So I'm hoping everyone on, on the call knows who I am. You know, my name is, is Des Ame. Um, I'm the Managing Director of Ame Finance Academy. Um, what, what, what are we? We're, we're a loans and funding company. We help people with mortgages to get on a, to get on a property ladder. We help people with, with business loans, with loans. And, and for traders, you know, we help traders with um, funding pots. So we have huge investment and we offer traders the opportunity to trade our funds, you know, and we split the profits and we assume all of the risk, you know. So that's just a quick overview of all the things that we do but i want to focus on the training for today so as you can see the content i'm keeping it um quite precise today and quite sharp so we're going to touch briefly on my journey i'm going to give you the good news because there is such good news for those of you that want to improve in this area and um someone said can he i i hear you can hear you okay brilliant um and also some practical tips for overcoming the fear and I want to end with seven principles for a killer presentation or a killer speech. Okay. Who's excited? Who's, who's excited for this webinar? Give me some, some, uh, some ones in the chat box, guys. If you're excited to be on this webinar, if you're ready to, you know, to get the, the fire, the nuggets, you know, I want to feel some excitement, guys. <laughs> it's very difficult when you're, when you're speaking to um, <clears throat> silence. But yeah, I'm loving those ones. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. You're firing me up. Aaron, thanks for the flames. Wow, wow, wow. Fantastic, guys. I love it, I love it, love it. Right, okay, let's get cracking. You came here to get nuggets, guys. So to begin with, guys, I just want to talk very briefly, okay, about my journey, okay? Not many people know this. I've never actually shared this before on any platform, not as a teacher, not as anything, you know? But I actually came to this country as a small boy, you know, not speaking any English. I could only speak my mother tongue. You know, English was not my first language. When I came to this country, um, I couldn't speak English. I could only speak, you know, a West African language. It was, it's in, in Ghana called Ewe. And that's all I could speak, you know. And on top of that, to compound things, you know, I had a severe speech impediment. You know, I had a stutter and a, st and a stammer as well. You know, it was, it was a very serious situation. And then to compound things even more, if the, if the not knowing English wasn't enough, if my accent, clearly, you know, I've got a thick accent at this point, that was enough. My speech impediments, the stammer, the stutter, if that wasn't enough, you know, I was extremely introverted and shy, you know. And some of you probably find it hard to believe, those of you that know me now, but I was a very, very shy young boy. Those of you that know my daughter, you know, will know that, you know, she's very shy and I think that's where she gets it from. And, you know, so I had to kind of overcome all of these things. And to make matters even worse, you know, my, my, my father... He was like a combination of Joe Jackson and Ike Turner. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> he was a hard guy. Do you know what I'm saying? So if I wasn't speaking properly, I was getting beats. You know, I had to learn the hard way. You know, it was, there was no room for, you know, anything. It was speak properly 
or, you know, old school African mentality, you know, speak properly, learn English. Why can't you learn English, you know? So I'm kind of dealing with all of this, you know, but inside I knew that it wasn't good enough. You know, I knew that I needed to improve, you know, I, need, I knew that I needed to be social and that I needed to make friends, you know, and, you know, it's very hard to do that when you come to this country, you got an accent, you can't speak English, it's tough. So I knew that, how do I put this? I didn't know what I was going to do in the future, but I knew that whatever I did, I needed to communicate better. So I, kn I knew that this is an area that I needed to improve. So what I started to do was look for opportunities where I could speak and practice. And one of the things that, um, you know, that really, really, really helped me was getting into drama. You know, I really got into drama. And guys, trust me, I was so shy that even getting into drama was such a big thing for me. But for me, I saw it as an opportunity to make myself uncomfortable. You know, some of the things we talk about now, like um, um, making yourself uncomfortable to grow. And if you keep doing the same thing, you keep getting the same results. You know, I didn't know none of these as concepts, but I knew that I needed to change something. So I got into drama and I started off, you know, with non-speaking roles, you know, just there. I'm just there, not speaking, you know. And in some of these non-speaking roles, I would just say something, even though I'm not meant to. The director's looking at me like, why are you talking? You've got a non-speaking role. But I just say something anyway. And I slowly built it, built it up, built it up, built it up. And then I got to year six, you know, and they, they held um, presidential elections. They were looking for, people are laughing. They were looking for, you know, four people to run as um, the president of the primary school, you know. So I put my hat in the ring. You know, sometimes you just got to throw yourself into the deep end. So I, I threw my hat in the ring, you know, and I ran for the red party, you know, and, and I had to give a speech in assembly. That was kind of like my defining moment, you know, and believe it or not, I actually, you know, I actually won that election. You know, I, I became the president of Southwood Primary School. I'm not sure if Asa is on this call. Asa, who joined um, Bryony's team last week, he went to my primary school. I'm not sure if he's on this call and if he remembers that. But that's quite a big thing for me, you know, for coming from where I did to winning that election was massive. Then I got to secondary school. And, you know, I was doing, I, now, you know, I wasn't just doing like, like small roles. I was going for the main lead. You know, I, when it got to like year 11, I was the main character in all the big productions. I was that guy, you know, that guy at school who's in, who's the lead character in all the productions. That was me by the time I got to year 11. And for me, it was just, that just kind of shows my journey and what I did, you know. But how, how did I do this? You know, how did I do this? That's the question. How did I do this? And this is where I lead into the good news. Okay. The good news. Who wants to know the good news? Who wants to know the good news? Put a two in the chat box if you want to know the good news. The good news, guys. You know, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a particular thing that I did, how I, how I went from not speaking English to being incredibly shy to be, being a lead character in place, even though it was so difficult. You know, very, very nervous, but I just had to put myself in there. The good news is, and I didn't know it then, I didn't know it then, but I developed something that was so powerful. And it is the most powerful thing that we have. And it is much better than skill. I promise you. All the research suggests that this is much better than skill. And it was my secret weapon, you know, when I went on to become a school teacher. You know, and that's where my journey continued. You know, I went on, I became a school teacher, an assistant head teacher, you know, having to speak in front of big crowds. But it was my secret weapon when coaching students. And this, the good news or the secret is this. It's called the growth mindset. I want you to write that down, guys. The growth mindset. This is powerful, powerful stuff. Now, in a growth mindset, People believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. And brains and talent are just a starting point. Yes, David, you know, you know already. <laughs> yeah, it's just a starting point. Okay, you can actually develop in any single area that you want. People that have talent and that are brainy, that's just a starting point. Okay. It's all about resilience. If you want to achieve something, you just have to keep working at it. It's about resilience. So let's have a look. Look at the two um, images at the bottom. People that have a growth mindset, look at some of the things that they say. Challenges help me grow. Failure is an opportunity to grow. I can learn and do anything that I want, as opposed to people that have a fixed mindset. You know, and people, those, those of you that are teachers in, on the, on the um, call, David and co., 
you would know that there are particular students that have a fixed mindset. So they will say statements like, I'm no good at maths. And that's it. They will go through the rest of their journey, their school journey, say, I'm not good at maths. That's it. Whereas somebody with a growth mindset will say, okay, I need to work at this. So I'm going to do extra maths. I'm going to, you know, practice my algebra. I'm going to do it over and over again until I master it. That is the growth mindset. And that's the good news that I bring to you today, guys. That if, if speaking in public is, is something that you are not good at, you can get better at this if you just practice. Okay, this is a fact. Research has been done on this. The lady who did the most research is called Carol Dweck. Okay, and the book is called The Growth Mindset. Those of you with children, please buy into this. That it doesn't matter what their starting point is. It just matters how much hard, hard work is better than skill. That's it. Okay, and I'll give you a few examples. Okay, let me give you a few examples. Okay, my old year group. I had a year group. When I was, um, before I was assistant head teacher, I was head of um, year seven and I took them right through to year 11. And you know, they came into the school, George in school, they had very low year six scores, very, very low scores, okay? In fact, they, were, they probably had the lowest key stage two stats results in the whole of Tower Hamlets. But we taught them the growth mindset. We taught them that if they just worked hard, that they could be better than their peers. And lo and behold, when that school, when that year group left in year 11, they outperformed every other school in Tower Hamlets that year. And to this day, that year group still holds the record for GCSE results. Let me give you some examples that you can relate to. David Beckham. It is well known that David Beckham wasn't terribly, to this day, I was going to say Stephen goes to that um, school. But yeah, to this day, to this day, you can go to George Green's school and check that record. David Beckham is known for not being that talented as a, as a, of a footballer, but he worked hard. I used to work with a guy that went to school with him. He said he worked hard and he honed that skill. That's why David Beckham was so good. Conversely, has anyone ever heard of Ravel Morrison? Sorry to use um, football analogies. Ravel Morrison was a player who played for Man United at the same time as Cristiano Ronaldo. Ferguson is on record as, as saying that Ravel Morrison was better than Ronaldo. But he didn't develop his skill. Okay, he completely wasted his skill and he did not develop to the levels that, um, you know, Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo did. You know, Bryony Bender, you know, someone I've worked with very closely over the years. She, you know, was, you know, I remember the first time she had to cover a, a, a teacher class, um, a lesson, she petrified, you know, couldn't speak in front of groups. But she's worked on this behind the scenes. You don't see all the stuff that she does to work on her speeches. Now she's speaking to crowds, you know, over 200 people at ease. So guys, what is the scale of your fear? Because you're here for a reason, okay? I want, I want to just get an understanding as to what we're dealing with. I want you to put a number in the chat box that represents the scale of your fear. If you're completely petrified about speaking in public, put a one. A five represents not bad. Once I get started, I'm okay. And a 10 is like super confident. <clears throat> what have we got here? Sab, five. Okay, David T, eight, yo, teaching background. Sherelle, six, sevens. Barber one. Hey, Mark, speak for us. Mark, don't speak for your wife. <laughs> Six from sixes and fives, one to eight. Fives, eights. Okay, okay, six. Okay, it's higher than I thought. That's good. Not bad. Okay, cool. So, I want you to now give me some feedback. How do you feel when you're about to speak in public or, or are asked to speak in for public? What sort of feelings do you get? <clears throat> what sort of feelings do you get? Very. Nervous, <clears throat> happy, good, good, Daniel. I'm going to come back to that. Butterflies, yeah, that, that feeling in your stomach. The belly churns, need to pee, sick. Yeah, these are all natural, guys. These are all natural. Butterflies again. <clears throat> I want to give it the most value I can. Excellent. Yeah, these are all common feelings, excited, butterflies. Sometimes it's a mixture of excitement and butterflies. Absolutely. Hot, yes, yes. I used to um, do speak out with some students and, you know, just before they were back to go on stage to deliver their speeches, you know, some of them would want to go to the toilet to, you know, to do a number two, you know, I don't know if that, if anyone ever gets that, you know, if that ever happens, just go, you know, you'll feel a lot better afterwards. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> just go. Overthinking. Yeah, absolutely. Does anyone ever feel like these people don't want to hear from me? I've got nothing, I've got nothing, I'm not, I've got nothing interesting to tell them. They're not going to be interested in me. 
You know, that's something I used to go through. You know, why, why, why would anyone want to listen to me? What, when, I was a, when I was an assistant head teacher, I used to suffer with something called um, imposter syndrome. You know, where it's like, because I got to that position quite young, it was like, oh, I might even, I'm, I'm here with all of these middle-aged people. Do I even deserve to be here? I used to sit in SLT meetings thinking that at any moment, somebody was going to come in, tap me on the shoulder and say, listen, your time's up. Come out. You've been rumbled. You know, imposter syndrome. You know, why, why would anyone listen to me? You know, <clears throat> happy and grateful. Good, good. I wanna, I'm going to come back to those feelings, guys. I'm going to come back to those feelings. Thank you for your contribution. So let's talk about overcoming the fear. Let's overcome this fear. What can you do to overcome the fear? First of all, okay, has anyone ever heard of picturing the, the audience naked? Picturing the audience naked or picturing the audience in their, in their underwear. Sab said, yeah, straight away. Okay, picturing the audience. Don't do this. <laughs> Look what Philip's smiling. Stop smiling. Don't, don't do this. This is a myth, okay? Guys, you've got enough to worry about with your presentation without having to think about who is naked, what pants they're wearing, you know, what, what, what kind of nonsense? <laughs> when, when someone first told me this, I was like, what, what do you mean? Picture them naked. Like, what? I don't understand. Uh, this comes from, well, I've never heard of that one. Stephen, trust me, you can Google it. People say it all the time. This comes from Winston Churchill, apparently. He, um, he used to do it a lot. Okay, this is where it comes from, you know. I know um, <clears throat> I'm, um, I'm actually one of his clients. Oh, sorry, his granddaughter, his great-granddaughter is one of my clients. And apparently he came up with this theory, you know, of, guys, just don't do this. You've got enough to worry about without trying to picture people naked, okay? The only method in the madness that I like is that it takes the focus off of you. But even then, I would say stay way clear of picturing the audience naked, okay? That is a complete myth. Don't do that. So how do you overcome the fear? First of all, trust me on this when I say this. First, do the thing that you're scared of and then get the courage. So what I used to do with the drama is I'd just sign up. I would just put my name down, yeah? So when the sheet goes up, who wants to play what character? I'm going to put my name down for the main character. I'm scared. I'm petrified. I don't want to, you know, be doing drama in front of my peers. But I'm just going to put my name down, deep end. I'm going to put my name down, and I'm going to find the courage later. Because it's going to come. My name's already down, so it's sink or swim. Yeah? Just fight. You'll, you'll find the courage. But the hardest thing is just putting your name down. So it's just saying, yeah, I'll do that Zoom call. Oh, I'll do that one slide on the Zoom. I'll, I'll speak at that event. You know, Auntie Anne, I threw Auntie Anne in the deep end. I said, do you mind saying a quick thing about the, um, about the um, copy-paste profit? Auntie Anne smashed it. You know, just put your name down, okay? Do the thing that you're scared of and then get the courage. Guys, know who you are. Know what's at your core, okay? Once you know what you're like, you know, are you a decent person? If you know that you're a decent person, nothing can affect you. People who disagree with you and don't like you, it can't shake you because you know your core, know who you are as a person. But here's one I really want you to master, guys. And I think Daniel touched on it earlier. Turn your fear into excitement. If you can master that, you're gone. You are gone. Turn your fear into excitement. What are you, so why are you scared? Think about a roller coaster. When you go on a roller coaster, initially you're scared, right? But you're kind of excited as well. So you have to find reasons to be excited about your presentation. So what have you got to be um, excited about? First of all, guys, write this down. Stage time equals wealth time. Because now you're delivering your message to a huge group of people. Guys, let me just say a big well done to all the people that have got Zoom, um, private Zoom calls coming up, events and um, mini events, home meetings. Big up to yourselves, because you've, you've, you've put yourself into the deep end and you're coming outside your comfort zone, okay? Guys, what are you doing now? You're not just talking to people on a one-on-one, -on -one. you're talking to a group. You've organized an event. Do you know how big that is? That's massive. Stage time equals wealth time. You can deliver your message now. You're leveraging an audience. It's the same message, the same time, but you're leveraging a bigger audience. Be excited about that. Be excited. Guys, look at this. If you master this skill, your earning ability is going to go up. Just by default. By default, your earnings are going to go up. I promise you. Isn't that something to be excited about? 
Isn't that something to be excited about? So if you can master turning your fear into excitement, okay? T just turn it into excitement. Just do it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be rich. This skill is going to make me rich. It's going to make me more money. I'm more confident, okay? And be that person that you want to be. Be that guy or girl who's confident. Just be that person. Be, just assume that role. I'm a confident person. I'm going to be that confident person. If you want to call it an act, you know, but just, you're just becoming that person. Step into that role because stage time equals wealth time. If you master this skill, your earning ability will go up. Guys, you're not alone. That, this is quite powerful to hear. You're not alone. Everyone feels the same nerves when they speak and present. Guys, Grant Cardone, you know, all of these big names that you're used to, they all feel it. It's because it means something. If you didn't care about it, you wouldn't get nervous. But because it means something to you, because it's important, because your why is huge, that's why you're nervous. So take comfort from the fact that, you know, we all have the same fear. Nikki has the same. Nikki is a great speaker. She has a gift for speaking. I've seen her just before events when it's just me and her. I see that look in her eye where she's... That, you know, that little nerves are kicking in, but she's going to smash it anyway. Yeah, she has the same fear, okay? David Imiote, Chris Terry, don't get me wrong, they're, probably, they're more confident, but they still have that fear, that little bit of fear, it's because it means something, okay? Les Brown, Winston Churchill was petrified. I've studied this guy. He was petrified. He, was, he used to talk a lot in the mirror. You know, he was petrified. If someone like Winston Churchill, who's regarded, whether you think or feel about Winston Churchill, he's regarded as one of the greatest politicians, greatest prime ministers this country's ever seen, he's nervous. So who are we? So take comfort from the fact that you're not alone. And that alone should reassure you that it's a natural thing to go through. But we still want to, you know, reduce that fear as much as possible. How do you reduce that fear? Guys, write this down because this is the golden nugget I want to give you today. I said I want to give you practical things. Confidence comes from competence. Let me say that again. Confidence comes from competence. Practice the hell out of your speech. Practice your hell out of your presentation. Practice it. Go over it. Go over it. Even today, this presentation, I went over it earlier today. I sat in my room. I told the kids, look, that is my presentation. I've got to go through it. Because I want to become familiar with my material. I don't want anything to catch me off guard. So I'm practicing it. The more I'm practicing it, the more comfortable I'm in coming with my presentation because I know I've been through it. I know what's coming next. It's all good. Yes, it's going to take time. But you get, guys, don't think the professionals are not doing this. They're doing it. Christopher Terry is practicing his speech before he goes out there. Practice the hell out of your speech. You will know it back to front and that will give you confidence. Practice, you heard that phrase before, practice makes perfect. It really does. You could even record yourself on video or record yourself on your, you know, on your phone and play it back. That's a technique I've, I've heard a lot of people do. You know, I do that a lot of speech as well. And then when I'm in the car or when I'm walking to work, I'm on the train, I'm just soaking in my own speech. I'm soaking it in. So it's becoming familiar with, it's, I'm becoming familiar with it to the point now I know it back to front. Okay, record yourself, play back. You can even play it to someone to get an opinion. Do I look nervous? You know, if you're recording yourself, do I look nervous? You know, you can get other people's opinions. It will lower your anxiety. Okay, best man speeches, you know. I've been fortunate enough, I've been, I've been best man, you know, on six separate occasions. And each time, you know, I've written my speech, you know, I've given, I've done a template, I've written my speech, I've practiced it. So by the time it comes to the delivery, I've done it so many times, you know, in front of a small crowd, you know, start to build up. Maybe you start doing it in front of the mirror. Then you're doing it in front of, you know, your, your partner. And then, you know, maybe a small crowd, you know, just build it up. You can just build it up. But confidence comes from competence. Here's a tip. If you forget something in your speech or presentation, no one knows. I used to beat myself up a lot. Like, ah, oh, I didn't say this. I didn't say that. Why didn't I say this? Ah, oh, no one knows that you forgot that. So don't, you don't need to beat yourself up. If you forget something, it's all good, okay? But just to emphasize, you can build things up. You don't have to throw yourself in the deep end all the time. The same here, Angela said. You can literally just, you know, start off, you can start off doing one slide of your uplines presentation. 
say, look, next time you'll do your presentation upline, can I do the um, compensation plan? Or can I talk about the harmonic scanner? Build it up. Or, you, or your audience can start off small and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Build it up. So conquering the fear, conquer the fear. The good news is when you start to do your presentation or your speech, your nerves will start to disappear as you grow into it. Who, who's felt that before? You're doing something and then as you're, as you're getting into it, as you're growing into it, you know, you're, you're just, you're on fire. You're, you're, you're conquering the fear and it's all good. Yes, Jonathan. You know, you start to grow into it. So the good news is just start. Your nerves will disappear. Take comfort from that. You start to enjoy it. You do, Sam. You start to enjoy it. I see you, Angelina. Yeah, you start to enjoy it. Here's a golden nugget, especially when the audience has a nice vibe. Yeah, when you start to vibe with the audience, it's beautiful. Exposure creates familiarity. Okay, so the more you do something, the easier it gets. Okay, guys, I have been doing, you know, I've been doing, you know, presentations at school, you know, I'm a teacher, assistant head teacher, you know, I've, I've been flown to like Columbia to do presentations in front of like, you know, very serious people. I've done so many presentations in front of so many big crowds, bigger than you can imagine. But then I joined IML, Michael made me do a Zoom for five people and I was shaking, you know? I was like, I don't know what's going on. That like, is a small Zoom. I don't know what's going on, but I wasn't familiar with the environment. And I remember speaking to Nikki and she had the same thing because, you know, the technology, Nikki's not very good with technology. So she's like, oh, what button? David said spot on. Like, just a new surroundings can throw you. I'm doing a Zoom. Like, I think back to some of the big presentations I've done. A small Zoom and I'm shaking like a leaf. And I'm like, what's going on? What's wrong with me? Is that... But guys, guess what? Guess what I did? I said, you know what? This is silly. So I just booked myself in for more Zooms. I said, I'm going to do a Zoom every week, even if it kills me. I'm going to do it. I don't care. The, my first Zoom, whoever was on my first Zoom, I apologize. It was ropey. But does it matter? Did anyone die? No, I just did it. <coughs> no one died. It, guys, listen, if your first Zoom is ropey, you're in good company. Mine was ropey. Nikki's was ropey. Just do it. It doesn't matter. Guess what? The next one's going to be better. And the next one's going to be even better. And the next one's going to be better. You know, that's it. Just, just do it. You know, your first Zoom is probably going to be with like, people you know anyway. You know, take comfort from the fact that mine was ropey. You know, it gets better. And here's something that I learned quite recently. The focus should be on the audience and not yourself. When you transfer, the, fo the focus shouldn't be on you. All of you that typed earlier about the things that make you scared, a lot of the things that you typed, okay, were about you. About, it's about how you felt. If you can transfer that focus onto your, um, if you can transfer the focus onto the audience, that will help you a lot. So keep the focus external, okay? What are they doing? Are they getting value? Okay, that's powerful. You might want to have a ritual. Now, a lot of the big guns do this. Go out Cardone, you know? Um, they all do this. It's a ritual. So before they're about to go on, you know, they have a bit of me time where it's just them. You know, you know, I've seen Nikki do this as well really well. She'll just find a quiet place and she'll, and, you know, some, she will pray. Some people will meditate, you know, but, you know, a bit of me time, you know. So, <clears throat> you know, so for me, you know, sometimes I'll just close my eyes. You know, I stole this from someone. So this is not mine. Um, and I'll just visualize a bright white light coming through the sky, you know, and it's kind of entering my head and it's going through my whole body. And the light just gets brighter and brighter and brighter until eventually it's just filling the whole room. And then I just zap and then the whole room is filled with this light. And then in that time, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm going to focus on everyone and I'm going to ensure that at least, you know, people walk away with some kind of value. If people walk away with some kind of value, my job is done, you know, and then I need to get my energy up. So sometimes you see my probably like I'm going crazy. I'm just doing certain things to get my energy up. You know, I'll jump up and down, you know, I'll shadow box, you know, take deep breaths, take deep breaths. And then you need something to just change your state. You could pound your hand, you know, you can, you could, you could pound your chest, but you need to do something that's going to give you a sharp shock to change your state so that you're ready. You're ready to go on stage. And the person who's introducing you, you're coming out, you're on fire, you know, rituals that really helps. So guys, moving into the last segment. Now we've got to the last segment. The seven principles for a killer presentation and speech. Guys, is this of value so far, guys? Uh, if you just put a free 
in the chat box if this is of value. Motivational music, David said. Yeah, absolutely. Tony Robbins as well. Absolutely, yeah, he does do that. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, good, 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 good. Brilliant. All right, guys, fantastic. Thank you for that, guys. We're in the last segment now. The seven principles for a killer presentation and speech. This is good stuff. Guys, connect with your audience. Before you even do your presentation or speech, know your audience. So when Nikki invites me to speak at her events, the first thing I'll say to her is, what's the crowd like? Is it a church crowd? You know, if I'm going to a church crowd, then of course I'm going to tailor my, my segment to that crowd. You know, I'll start with a little Bible verse. You know, just, I'll just hit them with that Bible verse about, you know, about how it's good to trade. I love that verse. You know, it's a certain version, but it's perfect. You know, guys, know your audience. The other day I was doing a Zoom call, a private Zoom call with a young guy. His audience was very young. You know, so I had to do some research. I was asking people, what's, what's the vernacular of the, of the youth? What, what, are they, what sort of things are they saying now, you know? And then I'm, I'm talking to these guys. I'm sounding like a madman. Brian is looking at me like, what's this, 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 this late 30s guy? <laughs> Funny Zoom call. You know, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to connect with these young these young guys with my old self. <laughs> David's been trying to do that for too long. Guys, connect with your audience, you know. Obviously, you don't want to come across as silly, but, you know, find out what are their influences based on geography or religion. How do they dress? What's their sense of humor? Try and understand your audience. Do that before. Know your audience. There's nothing worse than someone who doesn't know the audience and they've gone into it and they're just completely off key, you know. Don't let that be you. Guys, they're different members of your audience. So you've got the jokers, okay? You've got the jokers. We all know them, okay? Sometimes you will know the jokers in advance. Sometimes you won't. If you know the jokers, and this is probably where the teacher's coming out of me, you know, you can kind of, you know, sit them at the front so you can make eye contact with them, you know? But, you know, or you can banter. You know they're jokers, so you can maybe banter with them, get them on side. But they're going to be jokers <laughs> in, the, in the group. Um, I see that message, David. Cynics. Ah, oh, man, maybe this is the teacher in me. You are going to have cynical people. You know, trading, been there, done that. Doesn't work. <clears throat> That's why I always start my, the trading um, segment. I always say, park any preconceived ideas you have at the door. Because I know there's going to be cynical people, you know. Now, you can convert them. You can convert them. And if you can convert them, they're going to be a really good ally. Because you can convert cynics, but there's a particular skill with that. Because you know, you know, they tried it in 1965 and it didn't work. So why is it going to work now? So you give them new examples, you know, of why it's working now, for example. There's going to be leaders in the crowd. Everyone's looking to those people, you know, what are they doing? If they're feeling it, then they're going to feel it. And of course, where you've got leaders, you've got sheep, you know? So for the leaders, you may want to make, you, you may want to concentrate on them a bit more, pay particular attention to them, make eye contact with them, and you're going to get haters. Guys, you're going to get haters in the crowd. There's nothing you can do about that. About 10% are not going to like you. So what? You know, I find that quite comforting. I know that they're there and it's calm. Not everyone has to like you. Stop being obsessed with everyone having to, to love you. You're not there to be liked. You're just there to give value. You know, if you just focus on giving value, that's it. Okay? The, the minute I stopped caring about being liked in presentations was when I, not, I managed to get to a different level. You're going to have people in the crowd that like details and facts, okay? They're very analytical. So make sure your presentation addresses them, okay? Trying to be everyone's cup of tea and end up being a mug. Absolutely, Aaron, absolutely. Try try be everyone's cup of tea and you end up a mug. And you end a mug. Guys, people like facts, so make sure, you know, you're going through the compensation plan. You're giving them that detail that they need. There's people that want to be entertained. So you've got to be funny. You know, Emmanuel's very good at this. You know, he cracks jokes. You know, you have to to be entertaining if you can, because there's going to be people in the crowd that they, they, they want to be entertained. So you've got to service this crowd, this diverse crowd, people who want to feel part of a team. So this is where you're talking about, <coughs> man, he's a comedian, he's a comedian. This is where you're going to be talking about, you know, where we have a, you know, we're, we're, we're a family or, you know, when you join, we're going to put you in a WhatsApp group so you, you don't feel alone, you know? Um, you know, you're going to grow a team and you're going to look after your team. People want to feel part of a team. How do you connect with your audience? It goes without saying that you're going to have to use eye contact. 
okay eye contact but don't just focus on the ones that you know um are smiling you you, you always get that person in the crowd that's giving you so much love you know that person that you're just you're looking at you like ah oh, man god bless you you're giving me so much love and encouragement and you just want to focus on that person i've been in a crowd where you know like i feel like people are getting too much attention and i know no, the person not looking at me there's nothing worse than if you just focus on one person too long so don't just focus on that one person or that the few people that go in on the ones that are not giving you that time draw them in if you lock eyes with someone and gesture to them they will give you something back lock in with them be, always be aware of the people that you need to build a connection with often you'll see me trying to work the stage try and own that stage that's you that's your stage that's your stage own it work it sometimes i'll walk to one end and i'll look up at the gallery and i'll find someone and i'll just lock in with them then i'll glide across and i'll lock in with someone in the middle you know you've got to be majestic you know you don't want to be pouncing up and down like you're some sort of lion if I ever do that, then that, that's give me that feedback. I'm, I'm trying not to do that. Sometimes the nerves, you know, because of nerves, you're pouncing, you're pouncing, you're pouncing. Do you know what I'm saying? But just be majestic. You know, I'll, I'll, in the middle, then I'll just go to the side and I'll just try and gesture with this person over here. Okay, there's a skill to this. Guys, analogs, sorry, <clears throat> analogies. Analogies are beautiful. If you can use analogies, the audience love an analogy. An analogy is something that's like something, okay? So, for example, um, I could say, you know, learning Forex is like being overweight and um, going to the gym and trying to get that perfect beach body. It's not easy, you know? It's very hard, but it's worth it. You know, I, I, just, I just made that one up, okay? But, you know, an analogy, what, like comparing something to something else, you know, pouncing like a line somebody's written. Thank you, Louisa, okay? Um, um, being broke, give me an analogy for being broke. Being broke just before payday is like being in an ocean and you're treading water waiting for the lifeboat. <laughs> you know, you know what I was, okay? Yeah. Who's feeling like that right now? No one, hopefully, because you guys are all you guys are all um six and seven figure earners, so it's all good, okay? Using an analogy, guys, people love analogies, they love to be able to connect something to something else. So use analogies where you can. People don't mind if you mess up. Stop being frightened to mess up. If you mess up, it's calm. It shows you're human. People actually don't like flawless people because then you know people are like they're they're haters. They're like, ah, oh, why are they so flawless? Mm, they think they're flawless, you know. So if you make a little mistake, you know, you could now, you've seen people in the crowd start cheering when somebody's forgot their lines. People love it because it shows humility. You know, it's absolutely fine. Don't panic if you mess up. A captive how to captivate your audience attention you know ask questions you know ask questions so for example you know um who has recently been on, who has recently been on holiday they're talking about forex hands up you know <clears throat> they'll say yeah who's recently been on holiday nice question or a show of hands show of hands so you can so you can ask show of hands who here has a mobile phone show of hands you're, you're interacting with the audience use humor tell jokes again a manual is very good at this Okay, I claim it, absolutely, absolutely, Prince, okay? Use humor, if you can use humor, okay, you're onto a winner, Manuel does this so, I'm learning from Emmanuel, Emmanuel should be a stand-up comedian, you know, He's, how can you make finance funny? Finance is so boring, it's something he manages to make it funny. Energy, 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 start the way you mean to go on, yeah, your energy will be transmitted, it's infectious, lead with your energy. Uh, Moses, I saw Moses um, do a presentation once, guy's energetic, you know, I was tired just watching these guys. Energy, 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 you know, but match the mood of the room. I've seen people get this wrong. They'll come out, you know, you guys should be excited about your finances. Uh, relax. You've just come out, <laughs> you know, Let, like match the mood and build it up. Build up the energy with the room. We've all seen, you know, Nikki's very good at this, you know. Nikki will start off and then she'll kind of build up, you know, but don't just come in and like, hey, trade, you need to learn to trade. No, just relax and build your energy up, you know? Unless, of course, there's a lot of energy in the room. Then you need to come out of energy. But energy is so important. So we've got, uh, going back, what's number one? So one was connect with your audience, those of you making notes. One was connect with your audience. And two was energy. Three, have a killer start. Why is this important? The first five minutes of your presentation is crucial. 
Because if you lose them in the first five minutes, they're gone. They're gone. You've lost them. So your first minute, so the average attention span is five minutes, okay? So you want to capture their attention in the first minute. So you need a great opener, something that will intrigue. Daniel Agbula is the king of the killer star. Yes, you are. he is actually. This guy is, if you ever get to see this guy speak, he is, he's actually the king. Okay, so I'm going to give you four killer ways to hook the audience in 60 seconds. And if Daniel wants to add something in the chat box, by all means, okay? So you want to hook them. You want that hook, that hook. So straight away, you've got them. So arouse their curiosity. Arouse their curiosity. People are generally quite curious people. So you want to whet their appetite, whet their curiosity with a series of statements that is just going to draw them into your presentation. You know, so for example, um, imagine I come out, I come out, I come out on stage. Guys, I've got a secret. I want to let you in on a little secret. Yeah. Um, I wasn't planning on um, sharing this secret with you today, guys. But you know, what? on the car, on the car journey here, I just thought to myself, you know, what? I can't let this stay with me any longer. You know, it's, it's pretty serious. It's absolutely pretty, pretty serious. You know, you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm just building that curiosity. Or it could be a series of statements, you know, and you're just kind of making them curious, you know, keeping them guessing. You can ask, <clears throat> you can ask questions. Okay, questions is a really good thing to do. Okay, because when you ask questions, you know, immediately people are trying to figure out, it could be a rhetorical question. It could be a rhetorical question. Why, why are half the population in, in, in Britain in debt, for example? You know, imagine I ask that question. You know, it's a rhetorical question. I don't actually want to answer, you know, but you can ask a rhetorical question and then people will try and, they're trying to guess the answer. Or it could be a closed question, but they guess the answer. So now they want to see if they're right. And if they don't know the answer, they want to know what the answer is. So you're, doing, you're getting that engagement, you're hooking them in. And last one, you could trigger their imagination. Trigger their imagination. Close your eyes and imagine what your life would look like if you were financially free. What does that look like? What are you doing? What feelings do you have right now? Why is they're closing their eyes? You've got them in your hands. You can paint a picture. You can take them on a journey. And then when they open their eyes, you can even have a surprise for them. I've seen people do this where tonality, very important. Absolutely, Stephen. I've seen people do this where when they open their eyes, there's something on the screen. So it's like, oh, what, oh, oh. You know, you can do that as well. And the last one is you could even start and I know people in IMO do this a lot. Start with a story or an anecdote. An anecdote is just a quick story. Start with a story. People love stories. Jesus told stories. You know, start with a story or an anecdote. Just a quick one. So that leads me now to... Actually, no, I'll come on to that later. Okay, right. Speech patterns. Very quickly, I'm just going to whistle, stop, talk through this. Speech patterns. <clears throat> know what you're talking about. That goes without saying. I don't wanna, I'm not going to elaborate on that. Okay, however, do not do any of the below. Okay, don't do like I think or I believe or I guess. They, it sounds like you're not sure about what you're talking about. They're schoolboy errors. I think, I believe, I guess, or at the end of every sentence, you know, or in it, you know, in it. Just don't, don't do those. They're very, they're not, it's not professional. Okay, erms. Try, erms are hard to get rid of. Took me a while to get rid of my erms, but try and pause instead, instead of an erm. Pauses can help gather your thoughts. And if you get a question, pause and digest. Buy yourself some time. That's a great question. Sorry, can you, re can you repeat that question for me, please? Just buy yourself some time. I do that a lot. Sorry, can you, sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you just repeat, can you repeat that question for the people at the back? You know, repeat that question for the people in the balcony. Buy yourself some time. Have a bridge or connection points between parts of your speech. Movement. Regularly change your state and it will change the audience's state. Okay, this has to be strategic. Again, you don't want to be pouncing around, you can't be frantic. You know, you can stop and talk. Stop, talk, connect. Walk, glide across the stage, connect with someone else now. You know, you're you're looking majestic. Everyone's loving this. You know, you can also do something different, like halfway through, you're now going to go and sit on a stool, and everyone's like, Who's this? Who's this guy or girl? Just sat down on a stool so elegantly. You're just showing how comfortable you are with the audience. One minute you're standing, then you're gesturing to the balcony. Now you're sitting on a stool, calm. 
people, God, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. <clears throat> Use open palm gestures. It, it, it builds trust. When you show your palms, it shows that you're, 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 you've got nothing to hide. And again, guys, stories. Stories are powerful. Have a story. People connect with stories more than statistics. The human brain loves a story. You need anecdotes. Personal ones are better when they're about you. It shows your vulnerability. You should have a personal story. Stories are entertaining. You can, use, you can even use a story to big yourself up. David's going to love this one. So when I used to do staff presentations, you know, I'd say something like, you know, I was reading the Guardian newspaper at the weekend, you know. So straight away, they're like, oh, 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 the Guardian, you know. You can use the story, you know, use the anecdote to, you know, um, to kind of big yourself up as well. So the task I want to give you guys, a little task for you to write down, is create your free minute story or more. This is so important. And the reason why is because, especially if you're in IML, you need to have a story. You need to have a backstory. Have it. Have it down to a T. Practice it. You know, those of you that want structure for your story, what did you do before you started IML? Why did you join IML? Why has it, why has it been successful? If it has, why would you recommend IML? You don't have to use that structure. You know, that's just a recommendation. You don't, we don't want a um, hundred of the same structures, but you know, why did you, um, what did you do before IML? Why did you join? What, um, what has been successful and why would you recommend it? Okay. Have your own story and then, you know, <clears throat> record it. I said it earlier, record it and then listen back to your story. Become so familiar with your story that you know it inside out. Practice your story in the mirror. Practice it with your partner, with your cat, with a small audience. Build up. Okay. And guys, we're getting to the end now. This is the second from last slide, I think. Um, end with a call to action. Okay. You've now built up their trust. You've delivered this killer presentation. You've got the audience eating out of the palms of your hands. They're loving what you're saying. They're dripping off your every word. Don't spoil it by not ending with a call to action. This is if you're doing an IML presentation or even if you're doing a TED talk about, the, 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 about global warming. There has to be a call to action. What was the point of your speech? You, not, you need to tie it back. So you've got their trust. What's the call to action? Is it to give up smoking? Is it to, they have to recycle more? They, or they need to, there must be a call to action. Of course, I wear my IML hat. So the call to action should be, they, they should sign up to IML. You need to close them now for IML. I'm not going to go into how to close. That's a different training for a different day. How to close. You know, there are people that are so skilled at closing. But then you must end with a call to action. And they are your seven steps, guys. So what does this hand represent? Guys, this is you saying goodbye to your fear of public speaking. Wave. Wave, guys. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye, fear. Yeah, fear is gone. Yeah, the fear is absolutely gone. So now that you've said goodbye to your comfort zone as well, saying goodbye to your comfort zone, it's been nice. Who doesn't love being comfortable? Okay, we were in our, in our parents, we were in our, our mother's womb. It was nice. It was snug. We were getting fed. And then we had to come outside that womb. We had to go through the birthing canal. And I'm sure you get the analogy. Yeah, you get the analogy. Guys, seize this opportunity. You spent 50 minutes with me on this call. Did you spend it for no reason? No. Seize the opportunity now. Seize it. Fortune favors the bold and success is for the brave. Seize the opportunity. I want you to message your upline and tell them, if you've not already done so, I want to organize a meeting. This is my call to action to you. I want to organize a home meeting. I want to organize a private Zoom call. It's just uh, your private Zoom call with your upline and your people. Your upline will guide you through it. Seize the opportunity. It will just be for your people. Guys, your heart is probably pumping. That's good. But you are brave. You are to tell yourself, I'm brave. I'm just going to book it and I'm going to find the courage later. Just book it. It's not going to kill you. You're going to grow. Guys, I, do you know why I love presenting? Because I have endorphins 
running through my body after I finish presenting. And I, I find it addictive. I'm not sure if anyone can relate to that. You know, that when you know when you've you know when you've killed a presentation and you just you come off the stage, or when I used to do drama, you know, I'd come off the stage to a standing ovation and I have endorphins just running through my body. Guys, you know, that feeling is addictive. I'm addicted to that feeling of a killer presentation or a killer performance. And I just want that feeling over and over and over again. I want that for you. Yeah, that buzz. That buzz. I like the way Bryony said that. The buzz outweighs it outweighs the nerves. So Bryony used to be nervous, and now the buzz outweighs. Guys, that buzz is, is beautiful. Please, guys, I want this buzz for you. The buzz of when you become excited. You start, you start to you start to look for opportunities. Now I'm going to IML events and I'm like, yeah, guys, do you want me to do um do you want me to do anything? Do you want me to give a testimony? What, what do you want me to do? You know, because I'm looking for opportunities. Why? Because stage time is my wealth time. So I'm excited. I'm looking for opportunities. So guys, this is your opportunity. Reach back to your upline. Text them right now. In fact, do it now. Get your phone, text them and say, I want to book a Zoom. Philip, your phone should be popping off with messages. You know, I want to do a Zoom. I want to do a private meeting. I want to do a home meeting. I want your support. Reach up to your upline. Just reach up. Guys, yep, 55 minutes, all good. Guys, I hope that I've given you some value. I really do. You know, the aim of this was we're entering this season now, and I want you to be equipped. You know, there's absolutely no point. Wow, wow, April, love that. Who else messaged the upline? Who messaged their upline? Who messaged their upline? Apart from April, who has messaged the upline? Either say, I've messaged my upline, or I've already got something booked. Who are the money makers? Who are they? Ah, oh, it's April. Okay, only April. Okay, we've got one event. Booked. Booked already, Cheryl. And you are on fire, may I add. Mark, booked. Okay, booked. Nika's message. Wow. Philip's calling me. Why are you calling me, Philip? I'm doing a Zoom. You know I'm doing a Zoom. So why are you calling me for? This guy. <coughs> Call me after. Mine and Barbara, booked. Tosin, booked. Mark, booked. Wow, 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 wow. Guys, book, 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 book. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Guys, if you got some value, just give me a four, guys. If you got some value from this, guys, just chuck me a four so that I know <laughs> Philip wants the book. Oh, Philip, you got a book. That's why he's calling me, yeah? Okay, okay, I like it, I like it. Fours, ah, oh, wow, wow. Four is my lucky number. Wow, 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 wow. Guys, I'm glad you got some value. Please don't wait. That, this is the sad reality of this call. Some of you are going to leave here and do nothing. That, that's the reality. You're going to do absolutely nothing. Don't let that be your story. Because I believe everything happens for a reason. And there's a reason why you came onto this Zoom. And that reason was to better yourself and to grow. Not just for IML. Not just for IML, but in all areas. So you can give a testimony in church. So you can be a best man or a best woman or a bridesmaid. You know, in all areas of your life. You know, you will be better. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You know, have a blessed day blessed week and if you want me to attend one of your um, zooms or one of your thing i'm more than happy to do so guys take care stay blessed and i look forward to seeing you soon guys all the best thank you for all the kind words